partnered with InfoTrends, the leading worldwide market research and strategic consulting firm for the imaging, document solution, production print, and digital media industries to provide insight on understanding marketing trends and identifying opportunities uh, to streamline your marketing costs and to grow your business. Presenting today will be Kim Gross, Director of Sales and Marketing for Pace Center, and Kate Dunn, Director for InfoTrends. Now today everyone's microphones will be muted to minimize any noise for our speakers, but you can still ask your questions. You go to the right of your uh, GoToMeeting dashboard down at the bottom, you should see a place to type your questions. I will monitor these during the webinar and make sure our speakers can answer them during their presentations. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce our presenters. First, Kate Dunn is an award-winning leader in relevant cross-channel marketing, regularly shares her expertise at industry events across the United States as well as abroad. Kate is the director for the InfoTrends Business Development Service and works with organizations around the world to achieve specific marketing and sales objectives. Having published more than 30 case studies since 2003, Kate is a recognized leader in the strategic development and execution of personally relevant B2B and B2C marketing programs and employee communication. Kim Gross is the Director of Sales and Marketing at Pace Center Enterprises Incorporated in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Pace Center has been leading the way in the communications and printing industries for almost 30 years, offering highly effective cross-channel marketing programs integrating traditional print with cutting-edge web technology. Kim has spent the last eight years working with clients of all sizes throughout the country, helping them streamline marketing processes, integrate robust marketing programs, and ultimately take their business communications to the next level. Kim graduated from Misericordia University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Marketing and Business Administration. Upon graduation, she was hired by Paysetter to lead their marketing division and has played an integral part in the success of these programs. Several of the projects she has led have received top awards at the annual DICE conference, as well as the PODI app forum held every year. So now without further delay, let me uh, turn the webinar over to uh, Kim. Take it away. Thank you so much, Andy and Kate. Thank you so much for participating in today's webinar. I know you have lots and lots of great information for our attendees this afternoon. So welcome. Oh, I'm glad to be here, Kim. So today what we want to do, we have quite a few topics to, to touch upon, but you know, as everybody knows, business is moving again, new products are hitting the shelves, new promotions aren't far behind, and salespeople are constantly looking for an array of tools that can capture attention, imagination, and ultimately a share of the wallets of the savvy consumer. And marketers are you know, really focused on sales support, driving business, deploying the right tools and materials for field salespeople to really enhance and accelerate the sales processes. And while the message is clear that salespeople want tools and you know marketers need to really understand that they need to look at which materials are important and when they need to be delivered, how they need to be delivered, and how effective that can be done. But on the flip side of all of that, businesses recognize that not only do they have to do all of this, they have to do it with a reduced budget in many cases and you know things are getting tight and, and they're losing personnel and, and they're having to do more with less. And all of that links to the concept of marketing supply chain and how can we more effectively distribute that. So things that we'll be talking about today, number one, what is the marketing supply chain and why is managing that so important to you and your business? What is a marketing asset management program and how can something like that help my company ultimately save money and improve efficiencies and ultimately improve revenue? And then we're going to leave you today with uh, a summary and some next steps that you can begin taking today to start to determine is a marketing asset management program something that your company needs and if it is, how can you go and how can you start to implement that? So to get started, I'm going to turn it over to Kate, and she's going to walk you through the marketing supply chain and the ramifications that it has on today's marketplace. Great. Thanks, Kim. Um, well, let's just start out by defining exactly what it is. And so the marketing supply chain is really um, the processes and the suppliers that you use to produce your marketing materials. And those can be um, printed materials, uh, presentations, uh, content for the web, your social media and posts there, as well as point of sale documents, as well as your digital communications, um, email, mobile messaging, that type of thing. Okay, Kim. 
All right, so what we found from studying uh, various vertical markets and looking at really what's going on within the enterprise uh, enter enterprises in the US is that those uh, processes are really siloed and they're siloed by perhaps product or geography or channel. Uh, and then what ends up happening is kind of slide the uh, let you see up there now, um, there's a lot of crisscrossing, people looking for assets, people repurposing stuff that others have used. It creates a lot of redundant processes as, as well as increasing the costs of your marketing. And if you look at that even deeper, the time that's spent trying to find things and make sure you've got the right thing is taking you away from more strategic thought of, uh, you know, are you targeting the right mess markets with the right messaging and getting that to them at the right time so that you get the results that you're looking for. Okay, so now another really critical uh, thing to take away is that, you know, we as marketers in the world today spend a lot of money on marketing materials specifically. So at least um, 60, 60 plus percent of the companies out there spend at least 20 to 30 percent of their total budget on marketing materials. Um, and, you know, and a, a huge percentage is spent even more than that as well. What are they spending the money on? Well, but print collateral, presentations, folders, uh, any kind of handout, uh, direct mail, product sales sheets and, and documentation and on down the line to include things like signage and point of sale displays and even today packaging. So uh, there's a lot of, of actual printed things being produced and they make up uh, a huge portion of most companies or organizations marketing budget. But we're also finding that that supply chain is really broken. Um, when uh, the CMO Council, which stands for the Chief Marketing Officers Council, uh, did a study a few years back, they said, you know, at, started asking marketers what was going on, and 78% um, noted that they had a closet or a warehouse full of old material. Uh, so that now you have to calculate the cost of that obsolescence in your supply chain as well. 84% said that they had outdated materials because they really didn't know what was out there in the warehouse and had no way of checking on that and, and, uh, and, and cleaning things out and making sure they had the most current versions of things. There was no form of inventory management for approximately a third of the companies that were surveyed. And then 55% of the marketers had no real access to inventory or utilization level. So, you know, when you think about that, um, what, what you're hearing is, I want to turn a campaign around really quickly. A competitor has launched some kind of a special, you know, uh, um, campaign with special pricing and I want to respond to it. I may not have those sales collaterals and inventory, so I have to start that process to backfill those. Or worse yet, I don't even know if they're out there, so I proceed with my campaign and then find out at the last minute that um, the marketing collateral I intended to include is actually not in inventory. And the other thing, too, that you get when you start analyzing those numbers more deeply is I don't know who's using what. So I could have people that are hoarding materials. Uh, sales reps, for instance, are famous for doing that or and, and then maybe even more importantly I can't tell who's using them well so I can't make the connection between let's say a dealer that's exceeding their sales plan and the tools that they're using the marketing tools that you're they're using in the field so that I could develop best practices and share that across all of my dealer network for instance so there's a lot of broken uh, parts of this supply chain which means as organizations there's a lot of opportunity that's not being realized and really what that boils down to in, in this kind of this slide which comes from a, a great paper by point balance the four reasons for using a marketing asset management solution is that for every one dollar that you spend on producing materials you're spending somewhere between six and fourteen dollars 
on all those things there mentioned under the water line in this graphic. So procurement management, managing the vendors that supply those to you, customizing the documents, ensuring that you have the right version, um, storing them, managing that inventory, shipping them. Uh, and then you have some of the, the costs that are not as easily quantifiable, but what does it cost the, the, um, when those materials go bad and have to be destroyed? What happens if materials that aren't up to date are used in the field what all lost opportunities are resulting from that and then what am I not getting what best practices am I not able to create or, or identify and then um, share across my organization because I can't see usage tracking and things like that so uh, a lot of money spent on those uh, processes outside of just producing of the materials so I looked a little bit deeper at this recently because um, part of this this whole discussion of supply chain is not only the efficiency of the supply chain, but it's also the effectiveness of not only the documents, but the people working within that supply chain. So um, here's some really mind-blowing statistics that I think might be important for you. Um, the number of times the average person in a marketing firm looks for a file per week is 83. 83 times they're hunting around for something. 35% um, of those marketing personnel fail to find what they need in those searches. 71% um, of organizations uh, admit to having problems providing other staff members with access to assets within the organization, which means you're limiting collaboration between departments and you're just slowing the whole process down so you can't realize the opportunity in the market with your customers. And um, an example of, of kind of fixing the supply chain and improving both its efficiency and its effectiveness is that Motorola was able to save $600,000 annually by implementing a digital asset management solution. So um, what, what you can look at kind of taken away from this because you probably fall into these categories because most organizations do, 50% of the spending associated with marketing materials often results from product obsolescence or from those activities like storage, fulfillment, shipping, and inventory management. Only 25% of marketers have performed a comprehensive analysis of those costs and they haven't been able to uh, streamline the processes to get that efficiency and also be able to spend their time on creating more effective marketing. Only 11% of marketers have implemented, implemented new workflow systems, so they're not able to capture those reduced costs and that savings. Um, and they're also, whenever there's inefficiency in the supply chain, it's ripe for mistakes and problems that cost additional money. So, uh, and then the last statistic there too is that marketing materials that are typically lost to obsolescence, if you're trying to, to try to quickly quantify your cost, it's approximately 20% of the materials that you print that end up being thrown out. So Kim, um, I'll turn it back over to you now. Terrific, thank you so much for sharing all that information. I think it's, it's really uh, you know, amazing to see uh, you know, below the surface some of the inefficiencies that are happening in the marketplace and, and what that's doing for companies. So what I would like to do now is talk about what that top 11% have done. So the 11% that have cracked the code, they've figured it out and they've streamlined their processes to improve efficiencies and to increase revenue and to make that ROI just that much better. And what they've done is they've implemented a marketing asset management system or, you know, the acronym MAM. So what exactly is that? Well, it's at the core a tool that really helps companies to effectively centralize, localize, and distribute materials around the world. And that can mean a bunch of things, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it doesn't have to be print. Uh, you know, there are a lot of companies who use this technology simply for internal customers, so their internal staff, to be able to locate resources, to be able to send PDF downloads, to be able to send emails to a distribution list of 20,000 people, um, for their inside support staff to get inquiry and to say, I'm looking for information on X, to be able to easily generate versioned version collateral that can be sent electronically to the prospect within minutes versus hours or days. And it's really about automating that process. So finding an easy way to be able to access thousands upon thousands of documents or materials, whatever it may be, and to be able to automate the versioning of that and automate the distribution. 
So, you know, Kate did a really, really good job of talking about, you know, some of the gaps and where some companies are maybe falling down a little bit and where they can kind of tighten things up um, to be able to improve what their budget looks like and improve their ROI. But I want you to think about your company and I want you to think about your current process. And can some of those processes be automated? You know, think about things like how do you request pricing currently? Uh, how do you control the versions of your documents? Do you have a system in place currently that you can automate that process, or are you literally going in and creating version after version for your sales team? How are you tracking down assets? What does that process look like? Not only for your marketing departments or your sales departments, but think about human resources. How are they accessing the documents they need to be able to execute their job or perform their job better? Um, what does your customer support or customer service department look like? How are they accessing those assets? How many systems do you have? You know, we talk to a lot of companies where they've got five or six different systems in place and different collateral in different places, and it's just sort of a nightmare. How are you executing your marketing campaigns? Um, you know, how are you sending out your emails today? How are you doing lead fulfillment? These are all things that you need to look at and start asking yourself to say, where are the gaps? Do we have gaps? How can we tighten that up? How can we improve our efficiencies? You know, and, and this can kind of be a little overwhelming. It's like, where do I start? How do I even know if I need this type of system? So here are things that I want you to look at as you're looking at your organization and you're looking at the processes and how things are happening today to determine, is this something that I need? Are your marketing assets scattered? Or, you know, are they in a system, but the system isn't really adequate enough to manage them? So maybe it's something that's really print-centric, and you need something that can be able to offer downloads and video and social media and email capabilities. Um, you know, so what does that process look like? Is your organization a structure where you have lots and lots of different departments needing to access information, needing to access different items. So maybe you've got HR needing to pull different materials than sales, than marketing, and you don't have a platform that's able to handle that. If your, if your company or organization is into customization and you want to, be off, want to be offering variable content for your customers or your dealers, is it difficult? Um, you know, is it difficult to manage? Is it difficult to utilize? Once that's done, do you have difficulty making changes, ordering items, producing collateral? You know, we talk to companies all the time where once the item is versioned, it's difficult to get it in the hands of the customer or into the hands of the sales rep. What does that process look like? If they have a change that they want to be made, it's just a convoluted process to get that to happen. So what does that process look like today in your organization? Kim, if I may, we do have a quick question. Um, are there uh, are there different types of asset management solutions to address these specific needs? Uh, email versus print versus marketing campaign. That's a great question. Um, typically, if you can find one system, the most effective system is one that can handle all of the above. So you want to look for, and we'll talk about things to look for in a little bit, but you want to look for a system that can handle all of those things in one platform. Uh, it's going to save you the most money. You're going to be bringing everything under one roof. It's going to be more effective to manage. Um, you're going to be able, from a sourcing level, be able to have everything under one place and manage and see who's using what and how they're using it. It's a great question. Are there any other questions? Well, Kim, and I would just add, this is Kate, that, um, you know, as, as the number of channels that we're using to communicate, you know, continues to increase, that problem of not being able to find the things that you need um, is really multiplied across all of those channels. So fixing that uh, can really give a company a, a tremendous bump in productivity. Absolutely. That's a great point, Kate. Thank you so much. Another question you want to ask, do you have products that contain highly complex variable components? And do you need to have the ability to have maybe an automated process where you can have content changes applied across the board? We work with some customers who get weekly updates, and it literally affects hundreds and hundreds of pieces, and they need that to be able to be effectively done. So all things that you want to start looking at. Another big, another big area that I, I like to touch upon is that a lot of companies today work with multiple vendors. You know, they like to spread things out. They like to have multiple vendors working on multiple projects, which is fine. So you want to make sure that you have a system that's able to manage that. 
So you don't want to get locked into a management system or a marketing asset management system that you are only able to utilize one vendor. Um, the best platforms out there today allow you to link to multiple vendors so that Joe Smith's company can produce these items for me. I'm going to use this company to perform X. I'm going to use that company to execute Y. And you have it all centrally located and linked to one system. You also want to ask yourself if you need a way to qualify leads before adding them into the sales pipeline, you know, linking to things like salesforce.com, um, you know, and, and being able to qualify those leads before they're sent to the sales team. What does that process look like today and how can we streamline that? And do you need an easy way to, cust to customize customer and prospect inquiries and provide relevant information? I touched upon that a little bit. But again, you know, you've got that customer that's sending an inquiry through your website, and you want to be able to send personalized information almost instantaneously instead of having to wait several hours or several days. And can a marketing asset management system do that? Yes, it absolutely can. Um, one thing, you know, I, I just went through a long laundry list of things that a marketing asset management tool can do, and I know it's a little overwhelming. Think about this. You may not need all of these components today, but three years from now, four years from now, five years from now, that landscape of what you may need or what your business looks like is probably going to change. I mean, I think about five years ago, you know, what some of our customers were looking for and what we as a company were looking for, and that's just dramatically changed through technology. Um, you know, so you may have a program, again, that's very print-centric today, but what will that look like three years from now? Will you be needing to do variable video? Will you... Will you be moving more to an online system? You may not even know what that looks like, but you want to make sure that you are working with a, a, an asset management solution that can grow with you, not that you invest all well, of this money into a system today that can't handle what you need five years from now. And Kim, that's a really great point, and I would also point out that one of what we're beginning to see in the data is that well, not beginning to channels change. Um, you know, email was great until it became so cluttered that no one notices what comes in anymore. And you, you will see people move, and what they should be doing is looking at the performance of those channels and, and moving back towards um, channels that are less cluttered. So today, thinking that you have a good process that's allowing you to manage your digital assets for email, let's say, but you have a completely separate process for your print, down the road you might find out that you're moving um, to more and more print as that's a less crowded space right now. So having something that can handle um, your assets across all those channels is really critical to improving or getting the most out of that, that productivity bump. Absolutely, that's a great point, that's a great point. So what does that implementation process look like? Well, it all starts with the creative production. And a lot of companies work with several different agencies. Sometimes they have internal departments that handle some aspects of their, of their asset creation. But in a, lot of, in a lot of companies, it's more than one group. So it's either a marketing group and agencies, or it's multiple agencies, or it's a combination thereof. And currently, we see a lot of companies have those assets scattered throughout the organization. So each department has their own portal, if you will. Sometimes it's, it's just the desktop of, the, of a, an employee's computer, but it's all scattered. So there's no control over what assets are being utilized. Once you have a marketing asset management platform, you're creating a great corporate memory. So if you have a turnover of employees or if you have changes happening, everybody goes to one platform. We work with a company today who prior to in, in implementing this type of program, if they have a company turnover, employee turnover, they didn't know where some of those assets went. So it took them forever to try and track down where those different assets were if they ever did it all. So dumping it all into a platform like this gives you the ability, no matter what happens to your staff, no matter what happens to the agencies that you're using, all of your files are in one place. And when it comes to fulfillment in the marketplace, again, it doesn't have to be print. It can be web. It can be social media. It can be whatever you need it to be, whatever that channel is. What you're doing is you're helping improve brand control. Everybody's going to the same spot to pull the items, to distribute them however they need to, to, to use them. Using an asset management tool, you're getting a great amount of reporting. So you're able to enhance that corporate memory. What's being used? How is it being used? Who's using it? How is that affecting sales? How is that affecting, uh, you know, employee retention, customer retention, whatever the, the, the purpose of that piece is. And now all of a sudden, a platform that was originally used to streamline the process, to have everything in one place, 
to allow all employees and customers to go to one place to grab assets is now helping to improve creative development. So now it's coming full circle and we're saying to our agencies, hey look, of the six campaigns that you've developed, only two were effective and here's how we know that. So it's not just about streamlining the processes, which again, that's huge and that's saving companies hundreds of thousands of dollars, but it's also looking at the tail end and saying, okay, now that we've implemented all of these programs, what's, what's working and what's not? And you're able to go to one place to look at that and to determine what's effective and what's not. Kim, uh, we do have one more question quickly. Um, sure. Uh, is, a, is a solution like this uh, system only good for marketing and sales materials? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And that's a great question. We see companies that launch it for their human resources department, for customer support or customer service, for inside sales, for the individuals doing quotes, doing proposal presentations. Um, you know, a lot of companies that are finding the most savings and the most benefits from this are leveraging across all different departments. Great question. So goals, what should you be looking to do with an asset management system, asset consolidation? Again, we've talked about this a lot, bringing everything in under one platform. Improving efficiencies, so reducing the amount of time that users are spending creating variable documents or marketing collateral or finding things throughout your system. Making sure that everything is compliant. Again, this is huge. When you have different employees and different customers pulling things off their desktop that may not be matching up with, with legal regulations, you know, you get yourself into some trouble. So making sure that people are pulling the most up-to-date and legally correct information. And automating that process. So automating the customization, automating the distribution among multiple vendors, making sure that you are saving as much time as possible through automation. Key benefits of a program like this, you're going to see a reduction in your marketing costs and waste. So if you've got a warehouse of stuff that's just sitting there that you're not using, that's collecting dust, you're eliminating that. So you're just paying for what you need when you need it. You're reducing operating costs. So now what it took a staff of five to do, maybe it's taking a staff of three to do. Um, you're able to automate that process. Um, you're able to streamline what the ordering and fulfillment process looks like. You're reducing gaps. And you're just making everybody more efficient. The user experience has now been enhanced because, you know, typically these platforms, if you're investing in the right one, are user-friendly um, to navigate. So the, the customer or your internal employee is able to have a better experience overall. Obviously, when you add customization capabilities to any sort of marketing piece, you're improving the effectiveness. Um, you're also speeding up the time to market. So because it's easier to get these materials and it's easier to get them in the hands of the people that need to see them, um, you know, you're improving your revenue, you're improving the effectiveness of your sales materials, and through real-time tracking and metrics, you're really able to determine the true effectiveness of marketing and sales collateral, which is key. So you're able to go back to those agencies that you're spending tons and tons of money with and saying, here's what's worked and here's what happened. And Kim, let me just add that, you know, Infotrends has done a lot of studies, you know, demonstrating that the, the more uh, personalized the content, uh, the more the customers engage with it, response goes up, conversion goes up. But conversely, when we ask marketers, hey, you know this is great, why aren't you doing more of it? One of the top reasons was just the cost of customizing these things manually, of creating uh, personalized materials or even versioned materials for multiple markets. So, um, you know, every, the marketers know that it works, but without some type of automation here on the process, it becomes too costly to actually do it or too time consuming to actually do it. So those benefits of increased response rate and increased conversion rate and in increased interaction from your customers um, are lost because of the cost to actually get it done. That's a great point, Kate. And, you know, I know that we work with some customers today where it, that was problematic for them prior to switching to a, to a system that allowed them to automate that process. And they just didn't have the manpower to be able to constantly be executing these variable campaigns. So I'm going to leave you with some things that you should be looking for. So as you're evaluating different options, you know, you determine by asking yourself some of the questions we talked about earlier, yes, a marketing asset management program will be helpful for me. What are things that you should look for? Well, the first is that you want a program that can manage items beyond print. Again, a lot of systems today are print-centric, and that's 
could be fine today, but look towards the future and try and determine where is my company growing? How am I going to be growing? And the last thing you want to do is invest in a system that only handles the needs for today and then two years from now you're looking because you've outgrown what it, what it can do for you. If you have any sort of intranets or internal systems or external ordering systems that you aren't looking to get rid of, you want to make sure that the platform can have single sign-on capabilities so that users aren't logging in twice. You want information to be able to be shared back and forth to just streamline that process. If you have complex um, customization capabilities or customization needs and you need to be able to take data and apply that um, on a regular basis to all items within the system, you want to make sure that the, the system that you're choosing has the ability to automatically or to automate that process so you're able to upload data and automate the updates across the board. One thing that I just can't stress enough is that you find a system that can synchronize with multiple vendors if you have the need to utilize multiple vendors. And a lot of companies today don't want to be tied into just one to one company. So look for a system that can feed orders and feed information to multiple vendors across the country or globally. One thing that you don't want to forget about is a reporting platform. Um, you want to make sure that a reporting platform that's in the system is something that you can use and has the metrics that you're looking for so that you can be able to report on things to measure uh, effectiveness, to measure efficiency, to hold your agencies accountable, to hold your internal teams accountable, to really make sure that you can see where the gaps are, how we can fix them, and how we can make our marketing pieces more effective. At the end of the day, a uh, marketing asset management system can do a lot of things for you. It can better manage your company assets. Uh, you know, it can automate, you know, like Kate talked about, the development and the production of, of um, you know, variable pieces and the processes to preserve brand integrity. At the end of the day, it's all about reducing costs. Typically, customers that, or, or companies, I should say, that implement a system like this will see their, their operating expenses go down by 40%, which is huge. Um, and it's because we're automating the processes, we're fixing those gaps, we're streamlining how people are ordering, and we're streamlining how things are, are being managed. Kate talked about this earlier, but avoiding costly disasters in production of materials that may not be effective or that may not even be right. So, you know, you have somebody who's who's sending something to the to your print provider or sending out some email communication with information that's just not totally accurate because it's changed and they didn't have access to that current file. So you want to make sure that you're avoiding that and this can help you do that. We talked about the fact that not only will you see a reduction in cost, but you're going to see an increase in revenue producing items. So again, quicker to market. Um, adding things that have customization to, to improve the effectiveness of those pieces. So you're not only cutting costs, you're improving revenue, which is just going to help that bottom line look better and better. Speeding up the production and responsiveness to salespeople and distribution channels. Again, you don't want your customers or your prospects waiting you know, hours to get information. They want it instantaneously. So you want to uh, you know, implement a system where that information can be easily and quickly distributed to whoever needs it. So what are some key things? What are some next steps that you can take today to start to determine you know, where you are in this cycle? Well, number one, you want to document your current processes, including the people that are involved and the time it takes to do things. Write that down. You may not think that you have gaps, but as you start to document this process, you may start to see some holes and some things that you can tighten up. Make sure that you're quantifying the time and the people costs. You know, again, this is huge. Kate talked about this, but how long is it actually taking you to produce items, to get things through that fulfillment channel? What does that entire process look like, and how many people does it take? Does it take three or four people to get something to the right vendor? Does it take five or six people to get something into the hands of the customer? And if that's the case, is there a way we can tighten that up? Look at what's being used, what's being wasted, the pockets of waste. You know, again, look at what you have, in, if you have a warehouse full of materials or if you have inventory sitting in your office somewhere. Um, look at that. How much space is it taking up? Uh, you know, are we producing collateral that we aren't using and we're ending up throwing away or it's just sitting there? Or worse, are we giving out information that's outdated just because we don't want to throw it away? So look at all of that. Look at lost opportunity from slow turnaround times. Um, you know, this is huge too. You know, how long is it taking once you get the idea to, to launch a campaign or to launch marketing pieces? Once you get that concept in mind, how long is it taking for it to actually get in the hands of the consumers? And what does that lost time look like in regards to lost revenue? 
big thing is talk to experts. Talk to people who've done it before. Talk to people who have systems in place. Talk to people who are executing those systems. Do your research. Talk to people within the industry. Talk to your peers. You know, talk to your competitors. See what people are doing um, so that you can try and figure out where that fits into your organization and how you can execute one. And then build a plan. You know, this is huge. For a lot of companies, investing in a marketing asset management system is a big investment. Um, you know, maybe not so much necessarily on the monetary, but on, you know, the time it takes to roll it out. Uh, educating internal employees on, on where to go and how to access information. You know, it's a process. And it's a process that's going to save you tons of money. It's going to help build lots of revenue, but it's a process nonetheless. So, you know, it's, it's really, really important to, to build a plan. Kate, do you have anything else to add before I before I let everyone go? No, Kim, I think that you covered everything really well. Um, I think sort of the, the final thought, and, and this is a good one, but um, so I'll let you go ahead and say it, but I would just add to it that um, you know, we've looked and looked at since since the downturn in the economy, cutting costs uh, on the actual production of things. And with the competitiveness in the in the market today, uh, people can probably be assured that they're getting really good pricing on what they're producing. The last frontier, if you will, to continue to save money and streamline those budgets is looking at the cost of the people and the process used to to create them and distribute them. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah, we're just going to leave you with a final thought. Management is doing things right, and leadership is doing the right things. So again, lots of information to absorb, uh, lots of great content, lots of questions I'm sure you're asking yourselves as, you're, as we're wrapping this up. But um, I'm going to check in with Andy one more time to see if we have any final questions. And if not, I will let everyone go for the afternoon. No, we're good on questions. And again, I want to thank, uh, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kate, for all that great information. And uh, thank you all for taking the time. Uh, and I hope it was a very informative session for you. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Again, Kate, thank you so much. Oh, it was and my pleasure. And we hope you enjoyed the content. All right. Have a great afternoon, everyone.